Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and the other day I was watching the Justice League trailer for the first time. I'm a little bit behind on it's been out for a couple of months, but I really liked the titles in it. Very nice design, very well put together. It has this grunge look to it, and I thought, you know what, let's do a tutorial on it. Very simple, and I think this title goes to show that you can create something really awesome for your project and it doesn't have to be over the top with lens flares and you know 3D text and all these awesome camera movements. With this, you can create something very simple and make it look very powerful. So we're gonna go ahead and create this sort of title right here. So let's go ahead and get started. I already have a new composition. All I have in here is my text and a grunge background. You can go ahead and download these project files or you can go ahead and just Google uh, grunge textures on Google. And I also did a quick search up for the Justice League typeface. Um, and if you want to go ahead and download this font, you can go ahead and copy these settings right here as well if you want to have the same exact look. But let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to want to do is bring in another texture, which I have one up here. So we're going to have two textures for this tutorial. We have the background texture and we have this one right here. So what we're going to do is bring this one in and bring it on top of our text. And we can come here, hit S on our keyboard for scale, and we can scale this down so it can kind of fit into our composition like this. And if we go ahead and hide this for one second, you'll see that it's right on top of our text. And what we can do is go to the track mat, and if you don't see track mat, toggle switch to some modes until you see it. And go to your text and set it to Luma Inverted Matte. And that's how you can put a grunge texture over text. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. I'm just kidding. But technically, if this is what you came to this video for, how to do this, you're theoretically done. But I want to take this a step further and make this into a nice title animation and keep it very subtle, just like we saw in the Justice League trailer. So, but let's go ahead and start doing some little extra things to this. If we want to make this say like a little bit more dramatic, let's go ahead and create a new solid by going up to layer, new solid. And we can call it gradient. Then click make comp size and click OK and go up to effect, generate gradient ramp. And what we're going to do is set the start of ramp to the right side over here and the end of ramp to the left side over here. And we're going to get this black to white gradient. And what we can do is put this right above our background texture and we can set our background texture to a luma matte. And what's going to happen is going to make the texture or our background a little bit darker. It's going to take the form of uh, the blackness over here so we're gonna make it a little bit more dramatic and what we can do is go to our gradient and go to the start color and we can you know punch punch this up to like a gray color so we can still see into that uh you know contrast there and basically in their demo you know they had some uh you know a nice little gradient here is dark on the left side and you saw the texture on the right side so just going with that there so i don't know if anyone saw this in the demo but there were some particles coming out from underneath the text here and we're gonna go ahead and create those particles and also the floating particles around the text. It's really easy to do and it's not gonna to take too long. So let's go up to layer new solid again and we'll call this one uh, particles dust and we'll click okay. And then we'll go up to effect simulation CC particle world. And the first thing we'll do is we'll slide this solid layer over to the left so we can kind of have all these particles out here like this and just extend the back layer all the way to the end of the uh, timeline here. So we'll go into the particle settings. We'll set it to a faded sphere and we'll set the birth size to 0 0.03 and also the death size to 0 0.03 and we'll go to the birth and death color and we'll set it to white and then we'll go into our physics and we'll set the velocity down to zero and we'll set the gravity down to 0 0.05 and we have like these small particles over here. And then we'll go into the producer and we'll put our final touches on this. So we'll go to the radius X. Maybe we'll just increase this by a touch to like maybe 0.175. So we kind of have these particles over here. It's kind of stretched out a little bit more. And we'll go to the radius Y and we'll increase this to maybe like point, you know, 0.75 or something. Maybe 0.85, that should be good. And then we'll go to the uh, position Y and we'll set this to like 0.4 so we can kind of lower this a little bit, maybe 0.6. And our particles will be right there. So you'll see this. We'll kind of be raining this dust particles here. And what we'll do is we will go into the birth rate and we'll hit U on our keyboard, right in the keyframes, add a keyframe for that for sure. And then move forward by like one frame and set it down to zero. And basically it's gonna have like these nice little dust particles that will just fall down and fade away. And if you want, we can go ahead and lower the birth rate down to one just so it's a little bit more minimalistic. And you see we have these particles just floating down. And it looks good and we'll go ahead and put this layer underneath our text layer and let's talk about creating just particles around this so let's go ahead and just duplicate this layer by going up to edit 
duplicate. So now we have two particle layers and let's rename this one to particles float and it'll be good. So let's go into the particle settings again. And this time we'll set the birth rate up to 0 0.07. And we'll also do the death rate for 0 0.07 as well. We'll go into the max variation, set that to 100. Go into the max opacity and maybe set this down to like 45. So let's go into the physics and set the velocity to 0.2, the gravity to zero, and the resistance to 0.5. All right, so we see our particles here. Let's go into the longevity at the top here. Let's set this up to nine. And let's also delete the uh, birth rate keyframes and set the birth rate to 0.1. And let's go to the top here and set the longevity to nine. And let's delete the birth rate keyframes by clicking on the stopwatch and set the birth rate down to 0.1. So I'll go ahead and solo this for a second. So you see we have some particles here and it's going pretty slow and just coming kind of at us at the camera here. And let's go into the producer and let's go to the position Y, we're good. Let's go to the radius X, kind of increase this all the way across your comp and go to radius Y and do that all the way there. And you should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and unsolo these layers. And now if we scrub through here, if we can, we'll see some particles kind of just floating in there coming at the camera and it'll look good. All right, and then let's go ahead and create another solid and we'll call it a vignette. So, you know, it looks like there might be a little bit of vignetting that we can do. And let's go grab the ellipse tool, double click it, and it'll create this mask right here. Go ahead and set it to subtract, open up the mask one, and just feather the heck out of this. Go to like 300, 400 pixels and increase the mask expansion to maybe like 200 pixels or something. So we'll have like a very slight vignette to it. It'll kind of be more of a focus on the title here. And then one last thing we'll do, we'll add like a nice little transition at the beginning here to kind of put more emphasis on what's happening. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And we can keep this right underneath our text layers. So let's go up to effect, color correction, brightness and contrast. And let's increase the brightness on this. And maybe also increase the contrast by a little bit as well. And let's add a keyframe for both of these. Uh, make sure they're at the beginning of the timeline. And let's move forward to about 12 frames and set it back down to zero. And then let's go up to effect color correction tint. And let's set the map white to a nice light blue. And then let's do a darker blue for the map to black. And let's go ahead and set this down to 50%. Make sure you go to the beginning of your timeline, add a keyframe for amount to tint. Go to 12 frames and set it down to zero. So we'll have so far a nice little emphasis on over here. Let's go to effect blur Gaussian blur. And let's add a keyframe for Gaussian blur. Bring up those keyframes and move that forward to 12 frames and set the Gaussian blur up to like maybe 14 and repeat the edge pixels. So there'll be a little bit of emphasis on the text here at the beginning, kind of like this little glow effect here. And I think that'll look really nice. And the last thing that we can do is kind of do a little scale effect on here. So what we'll do is go to layer, new, null object, and we'll parent everything except for the vignette to the null object. And we'll move to the beginning here, hit S on our keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for scale for the null object, move to the end of your animation, which should be maybe about six seconds. And we'll set this to 105. So now we'll have the scale animation here. We have a little bit of particles floating around and we have these nice textures. It feels like it's a nice consistent theme. And when you're done, make sure to enable motion blur for your layers and turn it on at the top and go ahead and render this out. So if you were following along with this video, you should have gotten something very similar to this. And I think it's a really nice title. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, now you can please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.